Uh, hello everybody, um, my name is Brent and I decided I wanted to do a reflection about my process of language learning. Um, I've done them before but this one is a little bit more specific in the sense that um, like with anything we learn there's ups and downs and um, I've had a couple of downs <laughs> recently, as recently as today. Um, but it's made me reflect on the whole process and also part of the reason for that is to to learn to accept the ups and downs and roll with them and not give up ultimately um, but at the same time uh, as a learner and um, as a teacher even um, it's, I'm curious about the process the mental process um, not really from a technical scientific point of view or anything like that more to do with the um, the morale side of it and motivation and some and it sort of overlaps with some of the technical things perhaps um, I'm not an expert language learner or teacher or anything like that I'm just going through that process so anyway a little bit of backstory I've been learning Bahasa Indonesia or the Indonesian language for uh, what is it now going on about eight months um, most of that time on my own in a bit of a haphazard style like just trying different things and using the internet and using bubble app and using google translate and uh, chatting with friends and you know just doing it any which way i can um, and that was really good to get me off the ground uh, i got a foundation in the basics like that um, greetings and counting and small talk with people um, introduce introductions where you live all that kind of stuff that you would learn as a beginner in any language um, so I was you know really happy with that and and proud of the achievement I suppose um, and <laughs> so yeah so that was you know what was and remains enjoyable um, what I've discovered is that when you get beyond that stage uh, you get to you know what you might call an upper beginner or a low intermediate level um, you hit you, you you do plateau and I was aware of that it wasn't any kind of shock uh, you plateau and um, yeah it can be uh, on a bad day it can be somewhat demoralizing and discouraging because you feel like you were you know you were on this up uphill pr trajectory and you get this false sense of security like that's just going to continue and continue and uh, maybe for some people it does um, it hasn't for me so you have moments where you know you dip down or you you um, you get overwhelmed maybe speaking with a native speaker and uh, you feel like you should know what you're hearing and be able to respond because you kind of just feel like you've worked yourself to that point and then what they say goes completely over your head um, you feel well you can even feel embarrassed at worst or like self-conscious at least um, so all of that is um, you know I and others like me learning languages um, I guess deal with that um, it hasn't put me off to the point where I want to give up um, but it does but it is it's hard and um, your ego takes a knock your confidence takes a knock you kind of in a fit of you know even if it's only a moment of frustration just feel like oh everything I'm learning is just a waste of time you can't even you know get like that um, I guess the trick though is to not wallow in that and not and certainly not use it as a reason to stop um, which I suspect you know must happen to some people like you can only take so many knocks before you think why am I doing this especially if you don't need to do it like if you're doing it for a job or you're doing it for some you know your wife or husband or partner is from the country you know you, you have those external motivations but if you don't it's I guess it can be kind of easy to give up but anyway this morning just as recently as this morning I had an online Skype conversation with my friend Sasia um, and she's Indonesian and she speaks Indonesian and um, in the past we have had like basic chats in Indonesian and uh, they felt really good and I felt kind of confident um, today was not one of those <laughs> days um, I was kind of overwhelmed and perplexed by what she said and and she was only saying short re well relatively simple things I suppose if you're a fluent speaker that'd be completely simple um, and it was discouraging like in the moment like she's awesome she's very understanding and encouraging there was nothing there was no sense of her making me feel uncomfortable it's just my own my own hang up I suppose um, but I, but by doing this reflection I'm kind of acknowledging that and um, 
realizing that learning is not a constant uphill climb it's kind of like has plateaus it even has dips um, it's kind of like almost more spiralistic and then it goes forwards and backwards and forwards again so um, you know it is what it is but you've got to stay motivated um, I do have faith that the penny will drop I mean not magically and not on a, on on you know instantly or anything like that but I am improving and I have to just remember that even on a bad day when it feels like I don't know anything um, yeah so I, if you can relate to that um, know that you're not alone um, language learning you know, there's so many times when you feel great and you you feel on top of the world like yeah I'm doing this and I'm good at it and people tell you you're good at it and you believe them and they're right you know to a certain extent uh, and then of course you get reminded that you're a learner and um, you're not you're not bulletproof and you're not as good as you sometimes think you are um, for me uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my what I find uh, are my strengths and weaknesses in language learning um, I believe I have a pretty good ear I have pretty good pronunciation and I think I'm relatively good at mimicking what I hear um, Indonesian is my third language so I do have experience of learning a second language um, but that was over a much longer period of time and in a just a completely different way so I have learned some tricks from that but um, yeah with Indonesian and uh, I feel like I can mimic what I hear I can pronounce words pretty well um, I can speak reasonably confidently I'm not afraid to speak um, that's something that some people feel really uh, petrified to to speak because of they're nervous but I, I don't generally have that issue I mean sometimes sure but yeah I can read I can write reasonably well within my vocabulary limits I can read and write I'm quite happy to do that and I enjoy doing that um, I feel reasonably confident um, my biggest weakness is listening comprehension when somebody speaks to me or if they or if I'm watching a video and they're speaking quite fast um, I quite quickly and easily get overwhelmed and I can't process it and then that feeling of panic will set in because you're like oh, I'm not keeping up and then of course you're trying to process something that they've said and you while you're processing it they've said five more things and so you quite quickly get left behind and um, when you have to admit defeat in the middle of a conversation and say <laughs> so in Indonesian, you know, maaf saya, saya tidak mengerti, which means I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, yeah, it, it bums you out, it bums you out, but um, yeah, you got to bounce back, from, i got to bounce back from it, we have to bounce back from it, and uh, just keep going. Um, I've realized and accepted too that because listening is my, my weak side of things, or my weakness, um, I simply have to do more. Um, I realized today, I acknowledged to myself and then to Sasya while we were chatting, I acknowledged that uh, because I'm not good at it, uh, maybe I even, you know, subconsciously avoid it because that feeling of not being good at it is humbling and it's not a good feeling. I mean, you want to feel good, you want to do, th excuse me, you want to do things that uh, you feel good at so that you feel confident and, you know, I'm like that, I'm sure, I keep bumping this camera, sorry. Um, it's pretty natural I think to feel that like you want to feel good at something um, so maybe I'm avoiding the listening because I'm not good at it and of course that's just making it worse and worse and worse because I'm not going to get better at it by not doing it I have to do it so this is my sort of realization to myself that I must I simply must and that also takes the form I have to find effective listening too because I have tried listening things that are way above my level um, like watching the news in Indonesian on YouTube and they speak so fast with so much vocab I don't know that I kind of like I mean it's fun to listen to it just to hear it but I'm not comprehending enough of it to be you know meaningful um, so what I need to do is find things that I can with subtitles that I can listen and read um, another realization is that subtitles are not the enemy I kind of had this silly idea that oh but if there's subtitles and I can read then I won't listen be and it's a waste of time um, but I've ne since since uh, seen and read lots of information and research that suggests 
the action of reading, listening, and putting that together mentally is very helpful. And there are many la successful language learners who uh, watch movies with subtitles and all of that, at least initially, till you get to a point where you don't need them, and then you know that's the goal. Um, so I need to to lose this idea that subtitles is in some way negative or cheating. Um, I need to do that. I need to do it regularly. Um, I'm in an actual unique situation because in three weeks, less than three weeks, I'll be going to Indonesia for some for for a reasonable length of time. So I'll be listening every day, whether I like it or not, whether I choose to or not. Um, so I just want to like um, prepare myself the best I can. The real learning will happen there, no doubt. But um, yeah, I'm I'm going to continue with what I'm doing, but I need to address my uh, my weakness and my possible avoidance of listening exercises um, I need to just fight through that to to gain the benefit and work on the weakness um, yeah language learning is definitely in levels um, I feel like when I was a beginner I, everybody has this apparently when you're a beginner you you're you're rapidly increase you know you're going from nothing to something so that feels good it's like an adrenaline rush um, you do tend to impress people relatively easily because you suddenly know something you know more than nothing so that's cool but once you get to this once you get past that and the novelty of it all is kind of like worn off or at least sort of like subdued a bit then you then you're in the real task of learning the language because you can't just keep introducing yourself and saying hello and where you live over and over again you know even even the buzz of that wears off and then, of course, if you actually want to converse with people, you can't control what the topic's about. They're going to bring up all sorts of things, and, and ultimately you want to respond. So um, I'm learning all this by experience. Um, I have watched all sorts of videos online, polyglot videos and all that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of language learning in general um, and then experiencing it by learning Indonesian. So if you can relate to anything I'm talking about, um, yeah, you can maybe comment on this video or share it with other language learners um, I'm not doing it for subscribers and likes and all of that I, I, I'm primarily doing this reflection as a reflection for myself but I'm putting it out there in case other people can relate and um, yeah so whatever, how, wherever you're at good luck to you keep going on a bad day don't be discouraged too much just um, you'll have a good day <laughs> soon <laughs> awesome thank you